So the next speaker is uh, Dr. Galina Silivanova. She's a professor at the Department of Microbiology, Tumor and Cell Biology, and Dr. Silivanova's work has been very important since the beginning of the, the TP53 studies, and she focused on the development of small uh, molecules as well, restoring the tumor suppressor functions of P53 gene. So thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Um, first of all, I would like to say that um, as a basic scientist, I really never expected to work on something which will really help people. Um, you know, we, basic scientists usually think that the small things that they discover will add to a whole picture and then somehow, sometime, there will be something uh, coming from this which will help people. And uh, I'm very, very happy that the studies that I've started when I was a postdoc in class women's lab in Stockholm now are in testing, um, we are testing them in patients. And this is, this is very exciting. And I have to say that I was very much affected by uh, the contact with Lifro many patients because when we started to publish our papers about um, reactivating Newton P50C reactivating drugs, I've got calls from parents which asked us if it's possible to use our molecules for to help their children. Um, at that time, uh, my answer was, I would love to, but I cannot do it now. And uh, right now we are more close to that because we are now in phase two trial uh, of our compound, uh, which will enroll many patients, 180 patients, and hopefully that will be successful. So I will, what I will tell you, I will tell you the story how we, um, why we think reactivation of P3C is possible and uh, what it will do and uh, they, I will tell you more about the molecule. So I hope I will be able to uh, manage this. <laughs> um, yes, it works. So I just to remind you that P50C mutations are uh, very common, and this is the most frequently mutated gene in cancer. Uh, although the frequency of mutations are different depending on cancer, in some cancers, like ovarian cancers, is close to 100 percent. Uh, small cell lung cancer also more than 90%. In some cancers, like cervical cancer, uh, somewhere here, uh, it's very low because there is a human papilloma virus, oncogene E6, which inactivates P53. Um, why P53 is so important? Um, this scheme I used to show why Inactivation of P53C is so important for tumor development. Whenever you have oncogenes, which are really a driving force for proliferation of cancer cells, these oncogenes have signaling pathways which converge on P53. Whenever you have oncogene, P53C is getting activated, and then it induces cell death or stops the growth of cells. So the only cells will continue to proliferate and develop tumor in the end, which will either uh, disable the signaling to P53 or P53C itself. And of course, maybe uh, genes which P53 induces to activate apoptosis. But since this number of genes is very huge, it's more than 600 genes, it's clear that inactivation of P53C is so important. So from this also comes the idea that you have this pathway which from oncogenes through P53C signals to um, suicide of cells which have mutations in oncogenes. But you don't have P53 function there, that's why it's not working this pathway. So the idea comes that if you reconstitute P53 function, you can really kill cancer cells. And uh, very uh, important um, evidence which supports this idea comes from several studies by Scott Lowe, 
Taylor Jacks and um, Jared Evan, which were published more or less at the same time. And I'm showing here just the, uh, oi, sorry, the uh, study from Scott Law, which showed that if you, so the, the, the uh, experiment was like this. They took embryonic um, liver cells and uh, introduced p 50 c inactivating small RNA in the cells, which was regulatable. So you can switch on and off p 50 c in these cells. And then these cells were injected in liver of mice. The tumors were uh, developed, which you can monitor, monitor because they had luciferase. And you can see that tumors in the absence of p53 are very huge. And then you switch on p53 by giving the just tetracycline in the water to uh, activate this gene, and you have regression of tumors. These three papers which were published, as I said, in Nature and Cell, they gave very much support to the work of my lab, which we've been doing since the uh, uh, late 90s, which is reactivating of P53C by small molecules. Um, we are working on two strategies, depending, of course, on how P53C is inactivated. If it is mutant P53, we work on the molecules which stabilize the folding of P53C and in this way restore the conformation. And we'll tell you a bit more about this idea later. And in tumors where you have uh, while the P53C, the idea is to prevent the binding of P53C to uh, P53C's own destructor MDM2, which binds to P53C and inactivates it. I'm not going to talk today about this strategy uh, of reactivating WildTap and focus on this strategy where we have our molecule, which was called Prima 1 when it was found, and now it is uh, developed by the company into APR246. So why, how can we reactivate mutant P53C? When I was talking first about this in 97, I've got a lot of questions and quite, uh, you know, it was a very strange idea at that time, how you can reactivate something which is not working. So it was um, easy to understand that if you have an oncogene and you can design a molecule which will bind to this oncogene and inhibit it, so what, how can you restore the function of uh, uh, defective protein? So there are several particular features of mutant P53C which makes it possible. First of all, as you know, the mutations are located in the same region of P53, DNA binding domain. And the majority of mutations, they are, uh, inducing the same kind of phenomenon, destabilization of the folding of the DNA binding domain of P53. And from this comes the idea you can stabilize the folding. You already heard today about some approaches how to do it. Um, the second interesting feature of P53 is that, uh, which was actually used by a pathologist to um, identify mutant P53 expressing tumors because mutant P53 is usually expressed at high levels in cancer cells. In normal cells, if you stain P53 by specific antibodies to detect it, you don't see it. But in cancer cells, pathologists can stain P53 and they see a high level of P53 indicating that it's mutant. Why mutant P53 uh, Accumulates in cancer cells, this is because P53, as you know, is a transcription factor which has several genes activated and among them is a gene called MDM2, which is a P53C's own destructor. So MDM2 activated by P53C binds to it and degrades it. However, when you have mutant P53, so this is a situation in normal cells where you have P53C activating MDM2, MDM2 degrades P53C. That keeps the level of P53C low in the absence of stress. In cancer cells, you don't have active activity of P53C. Therefore, you don't induce MDM2. That's why you don't have degradation. So that means that mutant P53C accumulates in cells at high levels. So that already distinguishes 
cancer cells from normal cells. In normal cells, you have low level of wild type P53. In cancer cells, you have high level of mutant P53. However, this is not that simple because when um, they live through many uh, model of P53 transgenic mice was developed by JJ Lazana. She showed that mutant P53 normal tissue is also low. Only in tumor cells it accumulates. So then the question wa was why? And uh, what was found actually is that this um, several feedback loops which are actually regulating P53 in addition to MDM2 loop which we already discussed. That is ARF p 14 r is an inhibitor of MDM2, which is repressed by P53. So P53 represses ARF, ARF activates P53. So, and there are several more loops like that. So what happens in cancer is that suddenly you have disruption of these loops because of oncogene activation. Oncogenes, when they activated, they induced uh, DNA damage response. And DNA damage kinases, ATM, ATR, check, and others, they phosphorylate MDM2 and P53 and uh, disrupt this interaction. In addition, several oncogenes like cycling D, uh, uh, or loss of P16, RB, which are also oncogenic events, activate P14R, which then activate P53. So that means that even if mutant P3C is not able to activate MDM2, first of all, there are other transcription factors which can do that, like SP1. There are also uh, factors which work on uh, P14R. And therefore, mutant P53C indeed is accumulating only in cancer cells. And this is very important for uh, the uh, activity of small molecules, because if you have high levels of P53, uh, mutant P53, you can kill normal cells as well. But since you don't have it, then should be safe. So, and about the folding of P53, I just want to um, illustrate this by showing the, the structure of DNA binding domain of P53. This is a domain where all mutations actually occur. And this is a very complicated domain, and this it's called beta sandwich, this uh, long, I don't know if it's working somehow. I lose it. Okay, um, the binding to DNA is controlled by loops and alpha helix here. And if the folding of the beta sandwich is disrupted, then the loops are looking apart, so they are not located properly to bind to DNA. So the idea is that you, if you find the molecule which will be somewhere here, binding here, and stabilizing the folding, then you can restore the function of mutant P53. So to summarize, P53 mutations accumulate in cancer. They produce the common effect, which is unfolding of the DNA binding domain. And um, uh, they also occur in very aggressive cancers as well. And the strategy is to um, stabilize the folding of mutant P53 by small molecules. And I'm not going to tell you in details because it's been published already several years ago, our discovery of a small compound which we call Prima-1 for P53 reactivation induction of tumor cell apoptosis. Uh, we found this compound by the screening of chemical library, and this compound can activate different mutant P53 proteins and kill cells in mutant P53 dependent manner. What is important also is that our compound works better in cells with high level of mutant P53. So it needs high level of mutant P53, which you can find in cancer but not in normal cells, to kill the cells. Um, since I'm from Russia, I uh, illustrate this um, idea of refolding by showing this beautiful cathedral on the red square, which is unfolded, and then you add our compound, Prima 1, or now it is called APR246, and you get nice, beautiful structure again, which is, yeah, which is really beautiful. Um, so our compound can uh, uh, indeed 
suppress the tumors in mouse models. This is one of the first models that we did. This is osteosarcoma cells, which were injected in mice, uh, cells with mutant P53, expressing mutant P53, and cells without uh, P53, and then they were treated with control compound PBS or with a Prima 1. And you can see here that in treated uh, tumors, you don't have cells. There is a loss of tumor cells. So that was a very good result, which actually um, uh, motivated us to uh, move further. And together with my collaborators, Klaus Wiemann and uh, Vladimir Bykov and several student, PhD students who took part in these studies, we started a small biotech company called Apria AB. And this company has developed the compound further, and that's why it's called APR246 from APRIA, which actually stands for Advanced P53 Reactivation. And uh, our company has uh, already performed um, phase one trial to see the uh, uh, safety, maximal tolerated dose, and pharmacokinetics of our compound, which was very, um, uh, very good, and uh, uh, this also uh, study allowed us to look at P53C response, P53C mediated response, and we indeed see in patients induction of gross RS, that was AML patients with P53C mutations here, and induction of P53C target genes, shown the data for two patients, which indeed proved that our compound worked in uh, patients. And this was, uh, this allowed us to move further, and now we are uh, performing phase two trial, uh, which had two uh, parts. The first part is uh, 1B, actually. It's a, 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 a study to uh, estimate the safety of combination of APR246 with chemotherapeutic drugs with carboplatinum pedulated um, doxorubicin. And we do this study in ovarian cancer. As I uh, mentioned already, in ovarian cancer you have, um, oof, okay, to have to hurry, hurry up. In ovarian cancer is um, more than 90% P3C mutations. And uh, therefore, uh, we, we would like to help these patients first. So it was found in the first part of our trial that the combination is very safe, so you, you don't have any toxicity in combination and almost all the patients had at least partial response. And now we, I'm happy to tell you that we've got the funding for phase two trial, randomized phase two trial, where we will um, have a, a ovarian cancer patients with recurrent tumor, and we will use the combination with chemotherapeutic drugs, and we will, of course, monitor the response and uh, the P53-dependent response, and the uh, very important thing is to find the biomarkers for our molecule here. So now I have to, if you want to see the details of the trial, please uh, look at, uh, at the web page for clinical trials. And now I have to move on because uh, I just want to tell you about our future plans. And of course, we are we want to try different cancers, uh, especially lung cancer, where we have very high frequency of mutation. There are also several uh, clinicians we are very excited about our uh, compound, and they want to try it in in their patients. So we are probably going to have. Um, breast cancer trial and hematological cancers, as well as we are working on childhood cancers, medulloblastoma and neuroblastoma, as well as melanoma and glioblastoma. Uh, of course, we all know that the, there is no monotherapy for cancer. You have to combine it. So far, we are combining with chemotherapy, but of course, chemotherapy is, could be uh, toxic, therefore we are thinking about other targeted drugs and, uh, for example, combination with anti-angiogenic drug, which gave us fantastic results in uh, xenografts. And, uh, of course, it's very important also to find out what are the biomarkers, and we are working on this. We have done a lot of bioinformatics, and uh, right now are finalizing the study where we 
analyzed the response of 242 tumor cell lines to APR246 in order to see what are the biomarkers for sensitivity and resistance in these cell lines. Um, the mechanism of action of APR246 is still um, uh, under investigation. We know that APR246 binds to the core domain of P53, and our collaborator in Israel, Tsipi Jacket, she's working on the crystal structure of the complex, but there are also several questions, and also we have found that APR246 has another target in cells, which is thyrodoxin reductase. So to summarize what we think now about APR246, is that, um, first of all, it binds to mutant P53 and converts it into wild app conformation. In addition, um, it is uh, converted in, uh, into Michael acceptor compound MQ, which can bind to uh, glutathione and inactivate it, and actually glutathione is inhibiting chemotherapeutic drugs, many of them, including cisplatinum. And in addition, our compound can inhibit cytodoxin reductase, which is a ROS neutralizing enzyme in cells. And for cancer cells, it's very important, and it's actually a target for therapy for cancer. And this dual uh, activity of APR246, induction of ROS, and uh, induction of P50C activity probably makes it tumor specific and very efficient in cancer. How much time do I have? I don't have, so I have, <laughs> I have another part of my talk, so I don't, I cannot do that. It's just, um, I can just summarize um, here. So what we think also our compound is doing, it's preventing aggregation of mutant P53. So when it is unfolded, and unfolded proteins uh, tend to aggregate. So our compound prevent aggregation of mutant P53, and in this way, it uh, uh, changes the balance to, towards non-aggregated mutant P53, which could be then refolded by small molecules and heat shock proteins. And in this way, can restore the function of mutant P53. And um, just to conclude, because I don't have time, I can tell you that um, APR246 can prevent aggregation and even amyloid formation of uh, mutant P53, and not only of mutant P53, but also several other proteins which are tending to um, form amyloid structures like Alzheimer peptide and Parkinson peptides, and probably APR246 could be used, this is just uh, speculation right now, could be used also for treatment of these disorders with unfolded P53 like Alzheimer. Um, and finally, I would like to thank all my group and my collaborators, uh, especially Klaus Wiemann and oh, um, uh, Vladimir Bykov, with whom we did a lot of work together, and clinicians, Søren Lehmann, and also uh, other people in the different universities, as well as my funding agencies. Thank you very much, and I'm happy for the question.